Welcome to our webinar on Caucasus. I hope you will enjoy it. Well, I'd like to Can everyone hear me? Okay. I'm, I'm hearing you fine, Masood. Okay. Uh, good morning again. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar on Caucasus. I'd like to start our webinar with a question. Why go to Caucasus? What is, what is there? I would say a history of 40,000 years in Azerbaijan, in the, in the region called Gobustan, then history of religions and especially early Christianity. And, uh, uh, you know, for generations, scientists have believed Africa was the cradle of mankind. But recently in the north part of Georgia, Georgian Republic, uh, they discovered a skeleton, which is about 1,800,000 years old. So th this will probably overturn the theory of human uh, evolution, too. Nature, the Caucasus mountain, very green, wine and food, people and hospitality. And uh, those would be the main reasons to, to visit uh, Caucasus. Just uh, before we go into the details, let me tell you that floaters are uh, doing small groups. Maximum group size will be 14, but on the average, we're receiving 8 to 12 people on the average on our tours. And we've got our uh, overseas offices, although our headquarters will be in Florida, in the United States, of course. Uh, you know, we've got our overseas offices in the, in the region. That's why you can also... Uh, consider uh, us locals in the region. We have offices in Central Asia, Caucasus, Georgia, Caucasus, Azerbaijan, and Caucasus, Armenia, as well as two other offices in Turkey, Cappadocia, and uh, Istanbul. Easy connections. Uh, if you're coming from America, no need to mention the European countries because we've got many, uh, you know, uh, airline uh, serving from European countries to Turkey, but since you're in America, let me tell you that, you know, from uh, LA, JFK, San Francisco, Miami, Washington, as well as Atlanta, we have direct flights by Turkish Airlines to Istanbul. From Los Angeles, it would take you about 13 hours from JFK, 10 hours. And you can imagine how long would it take from other destinations to Istanbul. And then very easy connections, again, by Turkish Airlines, by the way. Uh, to, to Georgia, two destinations in Georgia, to Tbilisi and to Batumi, as well as to Baku and, uh, you know, to, to Tehran. In this uh, webinar, we're going to concentrate ourselves on uh, four tours, very briefly, of course, limited time, a lot to say, by the way. And uh, we have one tour beginning from Istanbul, doing two days in Istanbul, and then going to the far eastern part of Turkey, which can also be considered as South Caucasus. And this is the tour we've designed with the founder of the company recently, with uh, Dr. Aras. We call it the Armenian heritage, including all the Armenian, historic Armenian uh, sectors uh, of the world, beginning from the city of Wuhan, doing the eastern part of Turkey and entering Georgia, later on going to Armenia. And we have an extension to this tour uh, to, to Iran as well. The second tour, uh, you know, just uh, a Caucasus tour, we would start from, you know, Baku with a connection uh, with the Turkish Airlines from Istanbul to Baku, of course, and enter Caucasus from Baku and, uh, you know, visit uh, Sheki, some other uh, interesting sites in Azerbaijan, enter uh, Georgia through uh, Kaketi region and visit, you know, some interesting parts over there like Signagi, Gori, Tbilisi, and then going to Yerevan, but returning back to Tbilisi as we do not have many airlines serving from Yerevan to the other countries, but from Tbilisi to, of course, uh, other countries, uh, many, uh, many uh, services, many airlines serves uh, passengers. Well, uh, then uh, we have the, we have this tour with an extension to Iran, of course, begin from Caucasus, begin from Georgia, enter Armenia, and uh, you know end up in in Iran. And uh, we're not going to discuss this tour uh, in this webinar, but uh, just for your information, that we have another tour combining uh, Central Asia with uh, uh, Caucasus. This is a long tour, and uh, you can find it on our brochures too. Well, this would be the transportation vehicles we would be using in Caucasus and in Turkey as well. You can see them. 
uh, probably you will, I, I always repeat it, but let me tell you that you know we have those big coaches for the groups who would like to stick together. When group comes to us and say that okay we're, we're let's say 30 and we want to travel together, we do not say no. But on on the average, as I said, you know our passengers wouldn't be more than 14 packs for for the tours advertised in our brochures and on the average eight to 12 uh, persons on, on one tour. Well, we start with Baku, we regular, let's say classical Caucasus tour. Baku, Baku is, a, is a very modern city. And actually, you know, Baku was under the heavy influence of the Soviet architecture and, until recently. After independence in 1991, they tried to get rid of the, uh, you know, Soviet influence and started building ultra modern buildings and those are the flame towers built recently in in the city of Baku right next to the Caspian Sea on the western uh, side of Caspian Sea this is at night flame towers and this this suits very well with the history of long history of Azerbaijan is let's say fire worshiping history or Zoroastrian history of the of the country um, another modern building, uh, that, that would be a hotel in the city of This is the governor's house built by the German prisoners uh, brought by the Russians to uh, uh, Azerbaijan after the Second World War. It is still being used as a governor's house and at night and, uh, you know, pedestrian roads in the city of Baku. Very clean, very orderly. It is not different from any other European city, I would say. This is the house of the poets in uh, in between the new city and old city of uh, Baku and uh, at night and uh, you know right next to the new city of Baku we have uh, a place called Ichari Shehir that means the inner city and it dates back to 1500s of course AD it was built by Shirvan Shahs one of the dynasties uh, of Azerbaijan or let's say Baku they originated from from a nearby city called Shamaxi and in 1500s, they moved their capital from Shamaxi to Baku. And uh, there, you know, we have a lot of pavilions, palaces, courtyards, rooms, uh, Turkish bathhouse, the mosque, and all of them uh, made of stone like this. But of course, uh, what you're seeing right now over here, they were restored uh, recently by the, by the Azerbaijani government. This is the Maiden's Tower. Uh, right next to the uh, old city and uh, it has got a long story but let me tell you that you know there was a king in 1500s with a beautiful daughter and the king wanted his daughter to get married to one of one of his favorite men but the daughter said no and uh, he insisted and finally the daughter said if you build me a tower then you know I would accept it and the king had this built and what happened finally the daughter went to the top and committed to suicide that's why it's called maiden towers it is closed now because the young girls even today in azerbaijan tend to commit uh, you know suicide uh, from this tower that's why you cannot climb up this is one of the modern buildings of the city of baku uh, you know this this center designed in, in uh, i think 2000 2000s yes and uh, the center uh, you know to become the primary building for the nation's cultural programs and actually uh, breaks from the rigid and often monumental Soviet architecture that is so prevalent in the city of Baku, I would say, and uh, instead uh, aspiring to express the sensibilities of Azeri culture and optimism of a nation that looks to the future. That's why they have some ultra modern buildings like that. This is another view of the same uh, new cultural center of Baku. And uh, this is the concert hall, convention hall, and uh, the one of the Eurovision Song Contests, uh, you, you know, was was held over here about I think seven seven years ago. Well, Gobustan is only uh, I would say 50 kilometers from the center of Baku, and there what you have actually a rock art cultural landscape dating back to I would say 35,000 BC. It is uh, about 40,000 years old, and you have murals and engravings on 6,000 rocks like this, uh, bearing testimony to 40,000 years rock art. Another uh, rock with, with, a, with a, let's say, a ship, because it's right next to the Caspian Sea, by the way. 
and uh, you know you 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 can, you can get an idea about the lives of the uh, people earlier time 30,000 years before it's it was of course different but you know they were they were just like us human beings and they had similar uh, things to live mud volcanoes in Bakya as you know Azerbaijan is a very rich country in terms of natural resources and they have a lot of uh, you know oil in their country natural gas and uh, underneath Azerbaijan underneath Caspian Sea they say you know they have they have uh, volcanoes over there half of can you imagine half of the world's 700 mud volcanoes oising gurgling mounds of one subterranean sludge are located in Azerbaijan, concentrated along the shores of uh, Caspian Sea. By the way, uh, they are very different uh, than the rest of the mud volcanoes in other parts of the world. They are cold, I would say. They are not. They are not. They are not hot like like the other mud volcanoes of the, of the world. Well, uh, let me tell you about the religion of Azerbaijan. Of course, not now. They are they are uh, mainly Shia now. Uh, but uh, very light, and it's a, it's a very secular country, by the way. But starting from very early times, I would say times immemorable, uh, the people in Azerbaijan started worshiping fire. And as you know, you know, fire as underground gas coming onto surface contacts with oxygen and lights up. And people didn't know the reason. That's why they attributed some you know mystical, uh, some some let's say. Um, healing powers, uh, s such significances to the, you know, fire starting from very early times, and they built temples, and the people, you know, worshipping fire called the Zoroastrians. There is still the influences of, you know, that kind of uh, belief in, in the region, not only in Azerbaijan, but also, on, also in, you know, Iran and other countries, especially in Central Asia too. This is another view of the Ateshka. Ateshka means the temple of fire. The temple of fire. By the way, Azeri or Azerbaijanis means you know people of fire, as well. So this is the uh, god Ahura Mazda, the the you know greatest uh, of them all uh, in terms of let's say classification of gods and goddesses in that religion, in uh, you know fire worshiping religion. And uh, you know on the wall you're just seeing the reflection uh, from from that object over here. Uh, well, after, after uh, Gobustan, we usually uh, would have uh, two nights, uh, sometimes three nights in, uh, in the city of Baku, visiting Gobustan and other places, then make our way to the north towards Georgia. But of course, on the way, we would be seeing Caucasus Mountains, very beautiful, very scenic. And uh, this is a lake by the Caucasus Mountains. And we would arrive in a, in a village called Lahich. Lahich is a very old uh, village, I would say, another town starting from 5th century BC, almost 2,500 years old, and life is still going on in the in the uh, village of Lahij. It's a medieval uh, village uh, up, up on the Caucasus uh, mountains. Of course, it was an important place in terms of uh, history, and the Silk Road was also passing through there from Turkey, from you know Caucasus. All countries from Caucasus, from Central Asia, would stop there, exchange their goods, and uh, uh, you know improve their business uh, with the help of this village, because this village was a very important uh, place in terms of uh, metal mining too. Well, next, uh, let me take you to Red Town. Red Town is about uh, three and a half hours from. The city of Baku, it's, it's, it's a Jewish town uh, in uh, Azerbaijan. Red Town is the only entirely Jewish settlement outside of Israel and the United States. And, uh, you know, Jewish settlers, uh, starting from very early times, I would say probably first century AD, uh, after the diaspora uh, during the Roman uh, Empire times, started settling in North Caucasus and also in Azerbaijan. And uh, this is a very distinctive town or Jewish in, in Azerbaijan. They are called mountain Jews, by the way, uh, you, you know, not only in uh, Red Town, but also in some other places like, for example, Oguz on the way to Sheki, you can see small synagogues too with small uh, Jewish communities. And, uh, 
later on, we make our way. This is one of the small synagogues in the city of August, uh, on the way to Sheki. And here uh, we have uh, a hotel, a mountain hotel on the Caucasus Mountains. This hotel called uh, Tufanda, very beautiful hotel. And uh, this is the umbrella forest on the way to Sheki. It's very green in Azerbaijan, let me tell you, especially the north part of Azerbaijan like Georgia. And uh, finally, we arrived in Sheki. Sheki was the center of Al Albanians. But when I say Albanians, I don't mean the country Albania in the, in the European continent. This doesn't have any to, anything to do with the Albanians in the European continent. But the Christian Azerbaijanis are called Albanians in Caucasus. It was an important religion. and. Uh, you know, some of the Azerbaijanis were Christians, starting from very early times, I would say from the first century AD. The people in the North Caucasus, the Albans, uh, were Christians, thanks to some, uh, I would say, saints uh, migrating from Turkey, migrating from uh, Jerusalem to spread Christianity in North Caucasus. And the Albans, the, the Christian Azeris, some say even before the Armenians. Of course, the Armenians would never accept it. Georgians would never accept it. But Albanians were the first Christians in uh, North Caucasus. This is what the Albanians say. We have several churches of the Albans. And as you see over here, it says this is the name of, name of the village, Kish village. And there's an Alban church over there. It says from first century to fourth century. Of course, the building, uh, the, the, the church building you're seeing over here is not from first century AD. Foundations, they mean there was a small church and it was destroyed by earthquakes by the enemies during the wartime, but it was, you know, uh, restored recently. But the history goes back to first century AD. Uh, as for the origin of the Albanians, they come from Sax, uh, Proto Turks uh, from Central Asia, migrated to. Uh, you know, Caucasus. Uh, Sheki city is a very beautiful city. Let me just return back and uh, show its beauty to you. It's a mountain town and uh, it was uh, dominantly Christian, as I said, and it was the, uh, it was the uh, uh, target city for, for the Arabs and they wanted to convert everybody to Islamic religion. And that was a you know big problem for the Albanians over there, but they resisted, of course. And then it, it's, uh, it was invaded by the Arabs, unfortunately, and some uh, converted to Islamic religion, but uh, some of them uh, you know, maintained their religions. And still we have Christian Albanians up in the north part of uh, Azerbaijan, I would say. Staying there, uh, you know, two nights and seeing the Alban churches, like this one, another view of the Alban church over there. Uh, very similar to Georgian and Armenian churches, but, you know, the interaction, the cultural interaction, the architectural interaction is seen very often in, in North Caucasus. It's not a very big area, by the way. Uh, you know, Georgia, Azerbaijan, the largest one would be Azerbaijan, it's about 86 uh, thousand square kilometers, uh, you know, Georgia, little country again, you know, 70,000 square kilometers, and Armenia would be the smallest one, about 30,000 uh, square kilometers. And uh, Sheki, there is a caravansaray because that was an important city along the uh, Silk Road as well, and this is the caravansaray. Now uh, is being used as a hotel, uh, but not a very good hotel. That's why we don't use that hotel. Very tired hotel. And in Sheki, you have some handicrafts. Uh, the, the, you know, stained glasses. They call it shebeke, and stained glasses in English. They they don't use any nail or you know uh, glues any adhesives to connect them. They use uh, you know holes and a mechanical system to interlock uh, the stained glasses over there. They might be very cheap, uh, like let's say $10, $15, but as well, you know, it could be, let's say $5,000, bigger pieces. From Baku to uh, Sheki, which is another important city, that's again, you know, making of the stained glasses. It takes you about uh, three hours, but along the way from uh, Baku, to Sheki, we're visiting some sites like like Lahij, like the synagogues in August, and it takes you the whole day. 
And when you arrive in Sheke, you directly go to your hotel and rest. And the next day, you're visiting the Alban Church and the palace, the Sheke Palace. This is a palace built in 1500s, again, by the uh, Sheke rulers or the Saka rulers, let's say, with its origin, original name. And inside the palace, again, uh, you have a lot of stained glasses, uh, like here, you're seeing, you're seeing at, at the bottom. Azerbaijani faces, uh, you know, you have many different uh, faces. You have, uh, you know, white, I would say, Oriental, Euro-Asian, and, uh, of course, Asian, too, and, uh, you know, Caucasian, any kind of faces in Azerbaijan. They're very modern people, secular. Religion has nothing to do with uh, state in Azerbaijan. And uh, uh, it's almost a developed country recently because it's a very rich country in terms of natural resources with a lot of capital, I would say. Again, Azerbaijan faces and folk dances. And this is the hotel we use in uh, Azerbaijan. Holiday Inn, uh, you know, it might be a four-star hotel uh, in America. But uh, in this part of the world, it is considered to be, and it is really, I mean, the category is different than the United States. It's almost a four-plus hotel, almost a five-star hotel, let's say, but the category uh, is said to be four-plus. This is the hotel they use in the city of Baku, and another uh, hotel uh, would, we would be using, Fairmont Hotel. This building, this uh, uh, flame, one of the flame towers is being used as Fairmont Hotel, and we also use the Fairmont Hotel over there, inside the Fairmont Hotel, and uh, another boutique hotel we use in the city of Baku. This is Sultan Inn, uh, very nicely decorated, very elegant hotel uh, with nice rooms inside the uh, boutique hotel, the room. And uh, next, we're leaving Azerbaijan from this border, from Sheki. It takes you only uh, one and a half hours to get the border, one hour, 45 minutes, and enter Georgia through uh, Lavageki or Kakheti region of uh, Georgia. Well, Georgia, uh, Georgia's Kakheti region is the most important wine region in the country, uh, in, in both uh, quantitative and qualitative terms, as well as historic terms, I would say, because uh, they say for the last 6,000 years, they are producing wine over there. Georgians say we are the first who produced wine. Armenians say, no, we are the first. And Georgians uh, were saying that you know 6,000 years ago, we started producing wine. And uh, Armenians started saying the same thing because they had a proof in the uh, Arene village. They can show and they can date it back to about 8,000 years before. Now the Georgians say, no, we are the first, and it's about 8,000 years before. Before, they said, no, only 6,000 years ago. Well, uh, it's, it's a big discussion between the Georgians and the Armenians, but uh, let's leave it over there. Uh, who knows, maybe Armenians, maybe, maybe the Hittites in Turkey produced the first wine. We don't know. Well, uh, in uh, Kakheti region, we visit, we visit the uh, wineries over there, vineyards. And uh, uh, yeah, let me just uh, show you that 1,800,000 years old skeleton that was uh, found over there. It doesn't mean that it is older than Africa, South Africa, because in Africa they found they found a 3 million years old skeleton. Uh, but this is a proof that people migrated to north part of the world uh, earlier than the scientists thought, and later back to Africa again. And uh, later to, to European countries. And those are the skulls unearthed in the, in the same uh, part of uh, Georgia. Uh, well, uh, this is the wine of uh, Sinandali. Sinandali is an intellectual center, but it was built by Prince Alexander Chapchadze, the founder of the Georgian Romantism, turned this place, the Kakheti region, into wine producing region. And this is where the Georgians produced the first bottled wine. This is a palace, this is a museum now, but it also houses a boutique hotel, a wine cellar, and a, and a beautiful cafe in it. Uh, well, uh, the gardens around the Tsinandali, this is the Tsinandali Palace from about 700 AD, uh, designed by the uh, Chapchadze, Prince Chapchadze. 
he invited some architects from European countries and uh, he had them uh, designed the first European style gardens around the Tsinandali uh, Palace. And this is the wine cellar of the Tsinandali Palace. It is still being used as a cultural center as well, as I said, with concerts, sometimes exhibitions, art exhibitions, and so on. This is kind of Georgian way of uh, wine tasting, uh, even for the tourists. Uh, Alaverdi, Alaverdi um, uh, mon Monastery. Alaverdi Monastery is only uh, two hours away from the border as you enter uh, Georgia from uh, Azerbaijan. And there you're seeing, uh, you know, vineyards like this, and they produce their own wine. Signagi is a beautiful part of Georgia with uh, a lot of, I would say, beautiful buildings. Uh, Love City, it is also called. It's only one hour from uh, uh, Kakheti region. And finally, we come to Tbilisi. It's a modern city, but as well an old city. This is the old part of, uh, you know, Tbilisi with old houses. And, uh, you know, uh, the Georgians are very artistic and they build a lot of, you know, artistic uh, things, even houses and balconies and so on. Tbilisi is also known as a, uh, you know, city of balconies with beautiful houses. This is something surreal, a cafe in Tbilisi again, old houses in the uh, old part of the city, of course. And, uh, you know, at night, beautiful, you know, Georgian churches uh, long into, you know, fifth century AD, but of course the building restored over there. And uh, uh, as we go on, this is, a, this is a, a church rather new. It was built in 1995, Holy Trinity Church, another view of the same church, Georgians in the church. Georgians are the church goers. 67% of the Georgians are very religious, by the way, let me tell you. This is another church, beautiful church, long in the fourth century AD, and uh, the rivers uh, merging together, the Kura and uh, the other one, Aragli River. The Russian Orthodox Church in Tbilisi, by the way, to Tbilisi from Signagi, again, uh, one and a half hours. The uh, Gori city houses this Museum of Stalin. This is where the, the, the dictator uh, is from. And the people of Gori like him very much. This is the house where um, uh, Stalin was grown up. Uh, this is the uh, Pullman carriage of Stalin. Inside the Pullman carriage, we have it. Uh, Cave Town uh, from Tbilisi it takes you about uh, one and a half hours again, one hour 45 minutes. And they're using 6,000 caves. That was the center of Georgians before Christianity. But later on, of course, they converted into Christianity, and uh, the Christianity became the state religion, and uh, they also carved some churches into the rocks. And a uh, few towers in the north part of Georgia. Uh, you know, it was impossible to build city walls around the villages, as uh, it was very ragged and mountains, corpus. So that's why every house had its own uh, fortress like this, and uh, they, it, they were used as watch towers as well. And uh, feud is an important problem, social problem. It was, let's say, not now. It was an important social problem, but it was sold recently. Another feud tower, you know, feud towers in winter. That's the airport. That's the Queen Tamara airport. And uh, they, they were inspired from the feud towers of Swaneti, they say. Swan is an ethnic group living in Georgia. Inside the airport, it's interesting building Georgian faces, Georgian faces, and uh, you know Georgians drink a lot of wine. By the way, they like wine and uh, artistic objet in the city of uh, food artistry. That, you know they're very good at it in, in Tbilisi, and uh, street food, King Kali, and uh, King Kali's are dumplings, Georgian dumplings, and this is kachapuri with cheese and uh, other things. Hotels we use in in Georgia, Tel Aviv. This is the museum hotel very centrally located in Tbilisi. Then we enter Armenia and, you know, visit churches like this. A lot of churches. Armenians are not churchgoers, but there are a lot of monasteries like this because Armenians in the early time used monasteries as, uh, you know, educational establishments as well. Akhtala Monastery dating back to 10th century the inside the church, beautiful frescoes. And, uh, you know, uh, judges in the uh, church with turbans. Armenians thought, you know, if they put some 
figures with Muslim appearance, then they would they would prevent Muslims uh, from destroying their frescoes. That was intentional. Another church, Akhtala Monastery, it was an educational establishment too. And I would say uh, Minogyan, uh, who um, constructed or let's say built the MiG aircrafts, was educated in here, in the, in the Akhtala. Uh, some people say Sanahin Monastery nearby Akhtala Church. And uh, you know, those are the uh, crosses in the Akhtala Monastery. Dilijan, we stay one night over there. After you enter from Georgia, you only travel one hour to Dilijan, seeing, of course, those monasteries that I've just shown you. And, uh, you know, those are the Armenian bushes with a beautiful lake over 2,000 meters high. The altitude would be, this is, of course, autumn, the fall. We don't only have Australian bushes. Armenian bushes are beautiful, too. This is the hotel we use in Dilijan. This is the best, by the way. In Dilijan, it's, it's a quite comfortable hotel. Dilijan Church, Lake Sevan, it is known as the lake of different colors, the monastery of Dilijan, and uh, you know, different colors. This this would be morning before the noon, during the noontime, and this is the sunset in Dilijan. It's about 1,200 square kilometers over uh, 2,000 meters high. The altitude would be 2,000 meters high. And Yerevan, it's only one hour, one hour, 15 minutes from Dilijan. It's the iconic capital of Caucasus with a lot of beautiful buildings of Soviet architecture you can see all over the city. And this is the Mount Ararat. Uh, you know, this is called Sis, this is Masis. That, mean, that means, uh, you know, uh, Lesser Ararat. This is the Grand Ararat. Right behind it, you have Turkey, of course. It's only 70 kilometers from, from the Turkish city, Dogu Beyazet, over there. And, uh, Beautiful pedestrian streets, beautiful cafes and restaurants, very delicious Armenian places. This is another church right in front of the uh, Mount Ararat. It's called Khorvirap, where you have the uh, prison, uh, where, where the, let's say, uh, Gregory the Illuminator, who spread Christianity to North Caucasus, including Georgia, you know, Albania, and also Armenia, uh, was imprisoned over here. Etzmiadzin is a very important church. It means descending Jesus Christ's church with a beautiful museum. That's another view. A series of churches you can see in Etzmiadzin. That's the temple built in 74 AD. It's a, a temple of the fire worshippers. Even today, sometimes you may see, uh, you know, fire worshippers in, in the temple. Okay, this is Gerhardt Monastery. It's another monastery dating back to, uh, you know, 9th century, restored in 12th century. It was uh, carved into rocks of the area. Again, you know, rocks, some, you know, pagan, uh, I would say, symbols as well inside the church. Zwarnots Monastery, that was another fantastic building. That that would be the reconstruction, reconstruction of the Zwarnots. Uh, monastery. It was about 49 meters high, all made of, of course, uh, basalt stone of the area. Areni village, I'm um, approaching towards the end of the webinar. This is where wine invented, 6,000 years old. Also, we've, this is the first wine cellar of the world in the Areni village. And uh, this is the oldest shoe of the world, again, unearthed in the cave town of Areni. 5,500 years old. Well, uh, Armenian faces, Armenian wedding, uh, again, uh, you know, dried fruit in Armenia, Armenian food, excellent, uh, you know, uh, rice wrapped with uh, wine leaves, uh, Armenian cheese, salad, hotels we use in Armenia, Radisson, and, uh, you know, this is the best hotel in, uh, in Yerevan, I would say, uh, old and a uh, uh, local five-star hotel. Opera Suites, kind of special category hotel, very clean, very centrally located. Uh, we often use that hotel as well. And, uh, you know, we have Turkey parts with one. This is a Euratian fortress. Uh, in winter, you know, some cuneiform writings from Euratians dating back to 7th century BC. This is another Armenian church by Lake One dating back to 10th century AD. And, uh, you know, carvings all around the church depicting these stories from the Bible. And, uh, uh, you know, the Isaac Pasha Palace we would visit right before we entered Georgia. 
this is the abandoned Armenian city in the Armenian border uh, called Ani, belonging to 10th century AD again. That's rather interesting. Uh, let me, this is the, the Grand Cathedral and some frescoes in it. And, uh, you know, that building, that, that was another church, but, you know, only half of it. Uh, it was destroyed by earthquakes and, uh, you know, by wars. And Double Tree, these are the hotels we use in the eastern part of Turkey. That's a special category hotel. It belonged to one of the Russian uh, governors in the city of Kars, but restored as a hotel recently. And we also have the Iranian, um, uh, you know, extension, which is about 15 days. The Caucasus tours would be usually, uh, you know, 15 days with Iranian extension. It's about 15 days again. It would be 30 days. A comparison, and that would be the end of the webinar. You know, I just compare our tour to um, Mir Corporation in the United States because that's uh, uh, known very well in the United States. You know, it's 15 days. We have 14 days. Moderate first class, moderate and very first class hotel we use. You can check it. And the price would be by mere uh, 7,495 hours, 5,495. And this would be the calculation per day. Um, 497 hours, uh, you know, 392. This is the comparison uh, with, uh, you know, competitors. And uh, by the way, we are the locals. That's why we, we can get you know, cheaper prices due to our volume buying power. You know, our, our payment procedures, we use the best guys in the region. And of course, there's not time to explain all the, describe all the special things we do for our groups, like the, you know, music, the information we give, and trying to get the people into the local atmosphere of the places that we visit. Thank you for listening. As I said, you know, uh, limited time, a uh, lot to say. Uh, that's what I can do. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Masoop, for another cultural, historical, and touristic presentation. And of course, your images were fantastic. I think anybody that's watching this, their interest has been piqued. Um, Thank you. Let me, I'm going to jump back to my screen so people have your contact information. A couple of people had asked for the contact information. Okay. So let me do that. Please. Great, and then also a reminder for everybody um, participating, we are recording this session, and it will be available uh, at www.jaxfax.com underneath the uh, Travel Agent Training menu tab. There was a lot of information covered, and that will be a good resource to go back to. And now I know we have some questions here, so let me see what we have for you. Okay, okay we have several here. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody is asking, do you operate these tours year round and what would be the maximum amount of time spent on a bus? Uh, what well, we operate the tours all year round, but uh, the preference of the visitors would be probably between, let's say, beginning of April towards the end of uh, uh, November. Uh, but if demanded, we of course arrange tours during the winter time too. And the time uh, spent on the bus uh, on, on regular Caucasus tours wouldn't be more than four and a half hours. And every one and a half hour or two hours, we have a stop for refreshment facilities. Okay. Um, another question. What are the main staple foods of this region? Well, but mainly I would say beef, uh, some, some parts. Uh, uh, you know, would be mutton as well. But of course, uh, mainly I would say homemade dishes are very popular uh, all along Caucasus. But all the vegetables and meat are very organic, very, very delicious. And we try to keep an eye on the menus in advance. We call the restaurants and we, we try to, we try not to repeat the same menu. Of course, there's a, there's a, uh, menu controller uh, in our local offices in uh, Caucasus and also in, in Turkey. And in Armenia, the best food I've ever had, I would say, uh, in Caucasus would be Armenia. Some people may think Georgia. Georgia is nice too. Armenia, uh, in terms of food, is, is a very, very nice place. Azerbaijan too. 
I'm sure our people will have some unforgettable tastes in the Caucasus region. Very organic, very delicious. Perfect. Um, somebody's inquiring if there are any safety concerns for Americans. Uh, not at all. No uh, security concerns in Caucasus, including Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia. Uh, we don't have any security uh, issues whatsoever in the region. Perfect. Um, oh, going back to question regarding the buses, do you do seat rotation during the tours? Of course, all of our guides, uh, by the way, I've been a tour guide uh, for many years uh, uh, and uh, are told to do seat rotations on the, on the coach. Okay, great. Um, are the monasteries that are visited usually Orthodox? Yeah, Georgian Orthodox, I would say. Uh, Georgians uh, consider themselves uh, 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 as, uh, you know, uh, Orthodox. And uh, in Armenia, they consider themselves uh, Gregorian Armenians. And uh, in, of course, Azerbaijan, uh, they are the, uh, you know, Albans, Albanian churches. And uh, they are very similar. They are very similar, but there are some, you know, uh, I would say principal differences. For example, the Georgians would be diophysists. Uh, believing in the divine and human nature of uh, Jesus Christ. On the other hand, the Armenians and uh, some of the Albanians as well. Albanians and Armenians are different, okay? And uh, they are, they are uh, monophysists. They only believe the divine nature of Jesus Christ. But the architecture inside the churches are very similar. The only difference would be the Georgian churches are very decorated uh, with frescoes, with seats in them. But in Armenian churches, they're very plain, they're very modest, and the reason is, they say, the Armenians say, we want the people, the believers coming to the church, to concentrate on, on Jesus Christ, on the faith, and not concentrate themselves on the decorations in the church. That's why they do not have even seats to sit in Armenian churches. Fascinating. Thank you. Um, somebody's asking if you can quote business class airfare in conjunction with these trips. Of course, yes, we can if demanded. Our our people uh, in uh, our headquarters in Florida will will immediately do that. Perfect. And that is it. There's just somebody saying that it was a wonderful presentation, and she now wants to go. And I can okay. echo that. And uh, again, it was a great presentation. Thank you, Masoot. These presentations are always educational and engaging. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate everybody's time this morning. That will wrap up our presentation for today. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day. You too. Thank you for having me. Thank you.